in the background while I ramble for a bit. We'll just, uh, we're not playing Baseball Stars first, but, uh, there we go. So what is this, uh, this newfangled, uh, Neo Rank Masters thing we're doing tonight? What is the, uh, what is the purpose of the stream? I've been talking about it, but I'll, uh, I'll explain it again. Yeah, Mega Drivers, thank you for the, for the bongo birthday. For the 12 months. What I've been wanting to do, uh, with the whole Neo Rank Masters thing is that, well, basically, I just want to play Neo Geo games again. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's the main reason. I just really want to... I just really love the Neo Geo, man. I want to play some. Uh, I want to play some Neo Geo games, but I needed a. I felt like I needed a good excuse to. Outside of uh, outside of the the one CC BB8 streams, like what could I do, to uh, to really showcase the Neo Geo. And so with Neo Rank Masters, what we're gonna do, and this is gonna take uh, this is gonna take many streams. If we're only doing like uh, three, four, or five games a stream. Probably gonna take like at least like the rest of uh, 2022, possibly longer. We're gonna go through the entire Neo Geo library in chronological order, like or at least the games that uh, uh, they got English translations. We may uh, we may kind of look at the like the the mahjong games and the quiz games, but we're not going to uh, we're not gonna play those for too long because those games are kind of kind of hard to rank. Because we're not just playing these games. Well, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing them and and talking about them, giving my giving my history with the game and anything anything else I can think of that uh, is worth showing on the game. We're not doing we're not doing like proper one CC attempts tonight. Although obviously I would like to I'd like the one CC damn nineteen seventy five. I got to do that. No, what we're gonna do? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little more relaxed tonight. Just try to just trying to showcase the games, and after each game, we're going to uh, we're going to bring up the spreadsheet, which uh, there's you don't really need the link to it, but it's right here. Uh, what we're going to do after each uh, <laughs> after each game, uh, we're going to have like a community vote on where the game should should fall in the spreadsheet. We're going to make a a list of every game from best to worst which doesn't really make sense because there are so many different genres and i'm going to put it to i'm going to put it up to you guys we're going to i mean i'm going to be the mediator and try to uh we're going to try to figure out like where on the uh where on the list it should go so we'll be doing that after after every game is played uh i'm going to what I what I want to do, I don't want to uh, uh, keep the stream going too long because usually, uh, usually when I do like one CC BBH streams, those end up going for like five or six hours. Uh, my goal with these streams is to keep them to uh, at least like the ranking part, like keep it to four hours, which is you know still still kind of long because I know it gets it gets late on the East Coast, even later for uh, for people that are here from Europe. Hydragon, thank you for the for the 23 months. So I want to I want to keep this to a uh, a relatively reasonable time frame so people can actually if they really want to give their give their thoughts on magician on where magician lord should rank in like they don't have to they don't have to stay up too late. Yo, Adam, thank you for the for the max 330. Yeah, West Coast, Best Coast, I agree, but you know. <laughs> I got nothing against the East Coast. Yo, Jay Hannafin, thank you for the for the twenty two months. So that's how that's how we uh, we want to do things here. I am very excited for this. I hope this uh, this ends up going pretty well. But I guess before we start, we should do like a we should do like a little bit of a, a little bit of an intro about like uh, like S and K and the Neo Geo, right? Because not everybody not everybody knows. Like you might know some of these games, but you don't might not know might not be more familiar with like the Neo Geo system itself. So we'll just do a we'll just do like a quick uh, a quick rundown of that. Hey, the Ultimo, thank you for the 100 bits. So I mean, you know, we sh we should know SNK. I mean, if you were 
if you've if you've been in this stream, you know you know who S and K are. I mean, they were they put out a lot of games in like the uh, in the eighties. They put out games like you know Akari Warriors, <laughs> Atina, and you see my killer tattoo? POW stuff like that. They they produced a lot of arcade games. Some of them might not have been of the uh, the highest quality, but they they tried. They had their their own style, and they they released a lot of games for the uh, for the NES. Like they released a lot of home ports of arcade games. They made some original stuff like like Crystallis. Oh yeah, they made they made Fantasy. They made they made Vanguard. They made a lot of stuff. They made a lot of stuff in the eighties. And uh, Rachel, thank you for the for the one hundred bits. But like, uh, well, let's just put uh, let's just put this up. But like going into the actually, I should have some music in the background too. Let's just play some uh, Ninja Combat music or something. But going into the year 1990, like uh, SNK wanted to, uh, they wanted to focus on uh, on this newfangled Neo Geo thing. Like they completely cut out, you know, all all development and production on on everything else. Like they got out of uh, they got out of making uh, home ports for the NES. They 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 stopped playing. They stopped making they stopped making other arcade games. I think their their final arcade game was a. A rotary joystick game called Search and Rescue, which not many people have played. You might see that on 1CC BBH soon, maybe. And so, you know, going into going into the year 1990, they they went all in on the Neo Geo, and they marketed it as a uh, uh, as a as a cabinet that could hold multiple cartridges. Like all the games would come on cartridges, and you could store multiple cartridges on one cabinet, which would you know save space. Uh, for arcade operators, you could have a you could have a ton of games in one cabinet, and of course the cartridges would be sold way cheaper than than a new PCB. So it was easy to it was easy to slot in a new game. You just had to uh, take out one cartridge, put in another, change out the mini marquees, boom, you got a new game. Super easy. Anybody could do it. <laughs> Thank you, flavor text. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like uh I guess I mean it's 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 kind of murky on like the exact release day when like the Neo Geo MVS like appeared in arcades like everybody the internet says it was April 26, 1990 so we'll we'll go with that. And so like the first the first cabinets that like made it into uh made it into arcades were the uh were these six slot cabinets. Oh yeah, that's a that's a good point Rachel. They did uh they did work closely with uh, Alpha Denshi, ADK, to make the uh, the hardware. Alpha Denshi, the makers of games like uh, Time Soldiers and Kairos and Sky Adventure and a bunch of other crap. <laughs> so, I mean, Alpha Denshi always had close ties to SNK, so they were like kind of officially or unofficially the the first third-party license. And so when the uh, when the Neo Geo was released, it came only in this uh, this six slot cabinet, often often referred to as the as the Big Red by people who have been uh, been around for a while. It had uh, it had little uh, if you look under the control panel, it has like a uh, it has headphone slots, so you could uh, plug in some headphones and look like a gigantic dork in the arcade. And it also had a, a memory card slot. Because that was the other thing with the uh, with the Neo Geo, they were also uh, they were also pushing for a home version, a home console, which ended up uh, didn't get released until like uh, July 1991, I think. It got it got like delayed a bit. Thank you, Mortis. And and let's face it, the uh, the home cart. I don't know why this is a transparent image. Thank you, Wikipedia. Um, the home cartridge console was was marketed as a uh, kind of a upscale uh, <laughs> luxury luxury console because it retailed for like uh, six hundred and forty nine dollars if you wanted to get the uh, the gold system. I think the the silver system was three ninety nine. That would get you the console in, in one game because the uh, the games the games retailed for about two hundred dollars, and especially in nineteen ninety one money, that's a 
that's pretty expensive. So this this console was never going to uh, uh, never going to be as big as you know the the Genesis or the Super Nintendo or anything like that. But it it kind of hung on as like a, a niche console that was uh, that was loved by uh, by people that had the money to burn, I guess. And we mentioned the memory card. The memory card, uh, uh, <laughs> you could use it. If you actually had a memory card, you could save, like, whatever stage you reached in the arcade game. And you could use that memory card on the home version, too. And so, like, they marketed it as, you could play the game in the arcade and then pick up your progress on the home system, which really makes you wonder, why are you even paying to play it in the arcade if you're paying $200 for the frickin' home card? I don't know, that, that always seemed weird to me, but, you know, it was cool that it was, it was cross-compatible. And that was the, uh, that was the big selling point of having these $200 games. They were, they were selling it as, you're getting the arcade experience. Like, you're not getting a, uh, a chopped-down NES port. This is, this is the actual arcade game. But, uh, there are some caveats with that. I'll, I'll go into that later. <laughs> You didn't always have the same arcade experience, but for the most part, the games were... The game was the exact same as you got you got from the arcade experience. So if you wanted to pay $200 to get, uh... To get NAM 1975 or Baseball Stars at Home, you could do it. Of course, later there was also the, the Neo Geo CD, which... Uh, was kind of marketed as, uh... As a way to to play the games without paying $200 price tags on them. Those games usually sold for like for like $50 and they were they were mostly the same except uh, uh, the Neo G the original Neo Geo CD had a very a very slow single speed drive and they could only store so much memory and RAM. They later released a a CDZ which had a double speed drive, but uh, the problem was uh, by the time the Neo CD came out uh, fighting games were the were the big thing. Obviously, we're not seeing any fighting games tonight, but we'll be we'll be seeing those eventually. Don't you worry. And fighting games technically, or fighting games usually didn't. Uh, you couldn't store everything in RAM at once, so you had to either load between stages, or in the case of KOF, you'd had to load between characters. Like you you, you win one round and you got to load some more, and it's it's awful. <laughs> And so the Neo CD ended up being like even even more of a of a niche cabinet, I guess. And yeah, there wasn't just the uh, there wasn't just the uh, the six slot cabinet. Like it also came in a in the arcades. It also came in a, a four slot cabinet, which you know pretty much gave you the the same experience, just two less two fewer games. And they were doing they, there's actually two different models of the four slot. Like there's one that. Uh, uh, doesn't have the speakers on top. The speakers are actually underneath the uh, uh, the marquee instead. But at the uh, these cabinets still had. There was also a two slot. These cabinets still had the uh, the memory card reader and the the headphone slots and all that. There was also. Whoop! I didn't mean to get rid of that one. There's also this weird uh, this weird wood grain cabinet that's kind of rare. I've only seen like maybe three or four of these like ever. Very, very bizarre cabinets. But they, they've got some charm, I guess. And then, of course, eventually, you know, they put out a... They put out a standard one-slot cabinet. Unfortunately, the one-slot cabinets do not have the memory card reader or the headphone slots. They kind of... Uh, they kind of skimped on the... Uh, the uh, the board, I guess, and didn't, uh, didn't... Didn't give it the full capability, so that was... That was kind of unfortunate. And, of course, like later, uh, the, uh, the one-slot cabinets were sold in kit form, so you could, you could upgrade an old cabinet that, uh, that wasn't being used, that wasn't making as much money, put a, put a Neo Geo cabinet in there. And the Neo Geo, it, uh, it endured for a long time, like, all the way to the year 2004. Like, even when, like, new, new arcade hardware came and went... Looked, uh, looked and sounded a lot better, like the Neo Geo. Still hung on. Still uh, still around in arcades today, if you can actually find an arcade these days. I always enjoyed uh, coming across a new a new Neo Geo cabinet in the wild and seeing, 
seeing what games were there because you know with, uh, with these multi-slot cabinets, it's something it's something familiar, but at the same time, it could be something new if it's uh, if it's a new combination of games, some new games you haven't seen before. And that was that was always exciting to me. And that's uh, I guess that's part of the reason I really like the uh, the Neo Geo. Anyway, we should, uh, we should get on with the, uh, with the games. With the actual video games. So, wait, let me bring up the, uh, the six-slot cabinet again. So when they, when they released the six-slot cabinet, there were only four games out at the time. NAM 1975, Baseball Stars Professional, Top Players Golf, and Magician Lord. In Japan, there was a fifth game, Mahjong Kyo Retsuden. But obviously, that did not get localized. How do you select which game you want to play? There's a game select button right on the, uh, right in the middle of the control panel. Let me see if I can blow this up. You can kind of see it there. It's that white, that white button in the middle right next to the, the second joystick. Hey, Warp Rattler, thank you for the, for the 41 months. I might have missed a, a resub. I guess not. Some cabinets would actually let you select games at any time. Other cabinets, like, disable that until you put a credit in. I'm not sure why. By default, it's, uh... They make you, uh... Oops. I didn't mean to center that. Whatever. And by default, there's like a, uh... There's like a timer that counts down when you put in a credit. Which we'll see, because we need to, uh... We should get started. So because uh, there were there were four or five games released at the same time, we're gonna go in order of the uh, uh, the production code numbers because every uh, every game that was released for the Neo Geo has a a three digit Thank number assigned to it, which is just kind of a, an internal code to like tell it uh, uh, what game it is on the memory card or what uh, what data is being stored in the uh, in the RAM for for the MVS. And so the game that had NGH001, of course, was NAM 1975. So, hey, Soul Survivor, thank you for the for the 100 bits. 